Thank you. CIA Director Hayden justifying the agency's methods today by claiming to his employees that they work. Another passage from that memo saying that the U.S. and its allies have used, quote, the priceless intelligence from these men to disrupt plots, unravel networks, and save lives. If such a track record has been achieved, and we again have to take the unverified word of a dubious government for that, it is unprecedented in human history, which has shown time and time again that, as former POW Senator John McCain put it in South Carolina just yesterday, quote, I can assure you that if you inflict enough physical pain on someone, they will tell you anything that they think you want to know to relieve the pain. For a further reality check on this subject, let's turn to former CIA case officer Robert Baer, whose books See No Evil and Sleeping with the Devil were the basis for the movie Syriana. He is now a columnist on intelligence matters for the website of Time magazine. Bob, thanks again for your time tonight. Thank you. The administration's defense thus far seems to be the semantical one. Uh, what would you call, if we're going to get down to definitions, what would you call simulated drownings, head slapping, near freezing? Torture. It, it causes pain, and that's the definition of torture. These are techniques that American police uh, are prohibited from doing under the Eighth Amendment of our Constitution. It's illegal. It's torture. It's always been defined as torture. General Hayden, President Bush both claim today to have gotten valuable information from high-value detainees. In your experience, does that happen uh, frequently, infrequently? Does torture, or if we want to use their terminology, harsh interrogation, whatever it's called at the moment by whoever's calling it. Does it frequently work, or is it more the rare case when something productive is actually, is actually gathered? Keith, I've spent 21 years in the Middle East working for the CIA. I've seen the results of torture in countries from Egypt to Syria to Saudi Arabia, and the intelligence is drivel. Uh, it, it, it leads to false leads. Um, people will say anything if the pain is bad enough. Uh, it is useless, and I reiterate it's useless. I've spent three years now visiting Israeli jails, talking to Hamas prisoners, and talking to Shin Bet, their, their intelligence service, and they agree it's useless. They use traditional police techniques, interrogations, legal interrogations, and they get more out of an investigation than torture. As a, as a professional and an experienced uh, researcher now in this. I imagine something in uh, in the Time story yesterday might have been the most disturbing thing here, just on a professional, what in the world are they doing level to you. The the case of, of uh, Muhammad, of Khalid Sheikh Muhammad, who was severely interrogated over a period of about two weeks. But the problem was, as the Times put it, the initial interrogators were not experts on Mr. Muhammad's background or al-Qaeda. So in, instead of beating him up, does it shock you that the agency could have been, you know, much more easily served by having some guy who knew what the hell he was talking about and asked him questions? Because obviously a lot of these statements proved wildly false and, as you said, produced extraordinarily misleading lines of inquiry and, and perhaps uh, and who knows what else besides inquiry. Well, we know that he lied about his participation in the murder of Danny Pearl, the Wall Street Journal journalist who was killed in Pakistan, his head cut off. He just made that up, that he wielded the knife. He did that under torture. And what the problem I have is if he's our main source of information on what happened on 9-11 and it was extracted by torture, which everyone will tell you is unreliable, I'm not quite sure what happened on 9-11. Mm. And we're just adding to conspiracy theories when, when we, we get information like this. Uh, and that's not to mention that we're trying to win the hearts and minds of people in the Middle East, but that's a moral question that someone should answer. Robert Baer, formerly of the CIA, now a columnist with Time.com. Uh, great thanks for your perspective. I wish it were under other circumstances. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Keith.